Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Flatbird Creations. Today I have an order for six semicolon pendants. So I've made a template that I've been using for quite a while now and fits nicely in the spoon. Um, Focus. So the, the template, wrong way, fits right on it like this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to trace these out where I want them to be. And we're going to drill two holes, one here, one here. And then we're going to cut out this tail with a uh, my jeweler's saw. So I have six for an order, so I'm making ten. So we'll get to go through this pretty quickly. Let me send this. Okay. And uh, I made this little jig. Um, this is actually part of a... Uh, a tie holder set, but you can use nails. Um, I wouldn't use screws just because they're gonna scratch the stuff that they're gonna scratch everything. So, and then the hole, I drilled out a hole big enough for this guy to go through and he's three quarters of an inch. And then over the course of time, come on. Over the course of time and from different angles it's gotten ugh, magnets it's gotten a lot bigger hi Donald thanks for joining me so I'm gonna put this in my vise and we're going to get these holes drilled out but first I have to take the template and I'm gonna bring it down here for that to get you focused. So I always like to make more than I need. Will these fit? Yeah, barely. And my wheel of junk. Uh, there's my pen. I like to use these uh, Sharpie fine point markers. Oh, I forgot my mic. There we go. That should be better. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is trace this pattern on here and then we're gonna punch out our holes. So this was just a piece of, um, I got from the dollar store. It was a folder uh, for holding papers and things. I just took and cut it into strips and that's what I use for this. So semicolon goes this way. And there we got our first one. I like to kind of get them centered. And this was the easiest way I figured out how to do it because all the spoons are different sizes. So I just made the template and I just eyeball everything. And whenever we cut with our saw, we can change the shape a little bit. Sometimes it changes on its own. And I haven't polished these at all yet. I'm going to do that after we cut everything. 
Can you get it? Sorry. Now you can see what I'm doing. I gotta remember to look up more. And you just repeat. I always like to make extra just in case um, I need more later because I'm already tooled up and geared up to make them. So why not make a couple extra? All right. So template is done. We're going to come over here. Why isn't it going to, oh. I'm like, I have this thing fixed. Um, the semicolon, let me bring it up here real quick. Oh, I just had it on my phone. Um, the definition for it explains it a lot better than I can fumble through it. So. Um, semicolon meaning, uh, symbolize, there we go. Um, it says in a literary sense, the semicolon represents a decision by an author to continue a sentence rather than end it. In life, it symbolizes a choice to keep going rather than stop, which is particularly poignant for people battling suicidal thoughts, self-harm, and depression. So this uh, has quite a bit of meaning for me when I started making them. Um, I've had problems with it. My daughter was having problems with it. So this is one of the things that I made her just because I wanted her to have something I saw. I noticed her looking it up. And so I uh, I made her one, a little pendant, and then I posted it and it just blew up stories from all over the world, uh, different people sharing and uh, lots of people don't necessarily want to get a tattoo as a reminder. So we've made tons of these as pendants, keychains. I've even made a couple rings with the, the semicolon cut out in the spoon ring. Uh, that was a little challenging, but I figured it out. Um, there's also another thing called the spoon theory. Um, that's an interesting, um, an interesting uh, idea. Um, and that pertains to people with um, long-term illnesses yeah anytime thanks for asking the question um, so the spoon theory deals with um, long-term uh, health problems like I have fibromyalgia it's not going away um, people with lupus and other long-term diseases like that, they, uh, the spoon theory is if you, the easiest way to explain how you are, I look fine. I can do whatever I want, but some days I have five spoons worth of energy and it takes me one spoon to get out of bed. It takes me another spoon to do something else. And during the course of the day, once I run out of spoons, there's nothing left. There's no gas left in the tank. There's, that's all I can do. So the spoon theory uh, 
talked about that and it was it just happened to be i i made i make silver jewelry hey guess what <laughs> uh so i uh i made it out of a spoon and mental disabilities are often long term so it served double duty and i didn't know it at the time so still close to home and it's another thing that people can have instead of getting that tattoo as a reminder yeah donald it's it's something we just do what we can every day sometimes i only get one day in the shop a week because that's all i can do and then some days i can just build a house yeah jerry the so many people are they don't talk about it um, especially guys a lot of guys don't talk about it um, but i mean it's a it's a problem it's an issue everyone needs help with it and if we can do something to take their mind off it for a few minutes or be able to um, just let them know that we're there for them, it's, it's a big deal for them. Um, yeah. Mm, I'm sorry about that, Jerry. Uh, I need a hammer and my punch and i'm just going to try and find the center of the hole so we're just making the divots for holding that ouch that was my finger Because we're going to be drilling these out, these are just temporary. Spots. Um, once we get the holes drilled and we get them cleaned up, then we'll go ahead and cut out the semicolon tail. And you have to remember, everyone is different. So if they're, uh, if they're a little off, it's no problem. Sometimes I compensate by changing the shape of the tail. Thank you, Jerry. It, this is definitely therapy for me too. Um, I found out that if I can take my mind off of something, it even helps with the pain that I feel. Um, and what I listen to on my headset, uh, so I've always got my, uh, my headphones on it's normally something like dubstep or new age or some sort of classical music. Let's see if I can get you up here and talk to you. Um, am I crooked? And focus. Okay. Um, it distracts my brain from so much and I'm able to actually focus on this. Uh, and that, that really helps me be able to do as much as I can with the time that I'm 
going to be able to do stuff. Glenn Miller. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes I listen to rock. Sometimes I listen not a whole lot of pop and stuff. Uh, a lot of classic hair band stuff. But normally when I'm focusing and really in it for hours, I'll put on some dubstep. There's just a couple of words, but it's like an orchestra. Hundreds and hundreds of different sounds for my brain to just kind of focus on to where I can focus on physically one thing, which is doing this. So it kind of takes that other part of my brain away. Yeah, lots of Metallica. I found... <clears throat> I found the other day um, on my on a playlist there was a ton of Metallica songs that have been covered. I mean, there's tons of them, but I heard one of Metallica's songs. Somebody who I didn't even it was just crazy. I'll have to find it and and mention it another time. Yard sales, online spoons. Yeah, I I get a few spoons. The other day I found a knife. I actually found these guys. Um, white orchid. First love. And these are going to be whole spoon rings. They're nice and small like that. But my favorite were these. Let's see if I can get some light on them. It's a squirrel and a bird. And they're nut picks. And these are going to make amazing rings. They're like the perfect size. They basically get cut off right at the pick section. And they fit perfectly. Yeah, almost perfectly for uh, the overlap single rings. This, I love them. I've been, I searched almost all of Burlington, Vermont, um, just the past week or so, and all of my places are sold out. I couldn't even find one or two pieces. I ended up, I did find two two hollow handled knives. Um, and I can always use those. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're getting harder and harder to find. Also, if you search um, the coin shops that buy and sell gold and silver, they normally have a sign outside. Uh, I have a guy that I buy for three dollars well it was three dollars a pound for silver plate so whether it was silverware or um, different um, serving pieces hollowware uh, the teapots and everything like that it was all three dollars a pound and they actually get more money from selling it to you than they do sending it to get processed so they're motivated to sell it to you uh, you are going to pay a little bit more than scrap but it's a whole lot cheaper than a dollar a piece uh, I found that place and every time I'm down there I stop in to see if I can uh, find something interesting in the box and sometimes they'll have some amazing sterling pieces too um, I just listed I got this the other day at a thrift store. I could not find this anywhere online. Pawn shops are are generally good for finding them. The hard part is that a lot of times they want not even market price. They just want so much more than it's worth for us. So if we get it for an average piece for a dollar they're trying to sell it for three to four dollars a piece so sometimes you can get lucky with that but a lot of times in my 
experience, I haven't been able to find that. Uh, I don't think, I bought a set once from a, uh, a pawn shop, but it was crazy price, um, good price. There was like 40 or 50 pieces for 25 bucks or something like that. So I'm like, yep, take my money here, take it, take it. <laughs> I found this beautiful spoon and I flipped it over so I took and I polished it today and the back says sterling on it the front is Port Arthur Thunder Cape 1370 feet high that's what it says on the inside. Oh, let me get this. There we go. I was really excited to find this. Once it, it was all crusty and rust, not rusted, but just caked in layers. And I just, it was like, they had it listed for three bucks. I'm like, Yep, here, take my money. <laughs> oh, I gotta put it back in there. I listed it up on eBay already for a ridiculous price. Um, <laughs> so much of the silverware that I, I'm seeing sold and similar things are selling for just crazy prices. So I'm like, why not? I'll put it out there for a hundred and something dollars. And if somebody buys it, they do. If they, um, I also put lowest offer accepted also. So I'm going to get my money back out of it. The only thing I can do with it or see doing with it is melting it and turn it into something else. Um, but that's a, that's a whole nother story. I, melt down all my scraps and things so just little I think there's a hunk <laughs> hunk of melted silver there's a couple more small ones in here but I save all my scraps and everything and then I'll just put them in the crucible just heat them up with my torch and melt them. It's almost time to melt some more, but uh, with my, uh, where'd it go? With my rolling mill, I'm able to make whatever I want. I can make sheet, I can make wire. Um, I have a ring that's coming up for a niece. Um, I have to make, a dragon and it has to go inside of a ring so that's going to be a, a definite challenge and definitely not a uh, I was thinking ring but the metal so soft I, I don't know I have I have a hard time with that something uh, my brain likes things to be more bulletproof so if there's a possibility of it bending or breaking, I'm not a huge fan of that or catching on something. Uh, can definitely make tons of things out of it. Uh, but if it sits there for a while and I get to it, I'll probably make something with it eventually. <laughs> All right. Let's see, where was I? Oh, we just punched our holes. So I like to pre-drill the holes, the pilot holes, just so it makes it easier for my uh, step bit to come in. Yeah, sterling this morning, I think was 20, was it $28 an ounce? Um, no. 2509 this morning so I think it went up just a touch a few months ago it was um, it was almost $30 an ounce 
Um, so this is our step bit. I have it marked for my, uh, this is the mark that I'm going to. This is one of the marks that I use for something else. I don't remember, but <laughs> I have it marked, but this is the ring that we're going to be using. So as we go down, it's going to go down. And then once I hit that spot, I know to stop. So you can start this with, um, with this bit. I just find it easier to start the, to make a small pilot hole and then drill from there. So I'm going to see if I can get you guys over to my mess. Oh, let me, okay, autofocus is on. <laughs> Still trying to get used to the camera. Let's see if I can get you up here. And we'll try the zoom out. So inside this, I have a couple of holes. Come on. And I try and get that, my bit to go right through the center of the hole. Just tighten this down glasses are over here. Let me see if I can get out of the way. Let's see if I can get, tighten this up at all. Nope. All right, so here we go. A little bit of beeswax. My arm's in the way. And just a nice even pressure. That small hole really helps me be able to um, have small pieces of silverware or places that are like right on the end of some silverware. I'm able to get the whole piece over the hole or almost all the way over the hole. And you can also see that I haven't uh, polished them at all. I generally wait till the end for that. Because these pieces are going to get polished up pretty good anyways once I clean up all the holes.
That one was easy. Another easy one. This is a thicker one. So I'm just putting a light enough pressure on it to like keep it in the hole but if you see that nothing's coming out or it just stops you'll kind of feel it when it does that and if you just take and wax up the bit a lot of times that will loosen it up enough to be able to I was going to zoom you out a little bit, but I think that spot looks good. Let's go that way a little bit more. Okay. Let's grab a bucket. We're going to be making a, a lot of chips. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my, my spoon in there. Because the drill bit is turning this direction, this is going to go just like this. So that's why we have this one here. And these two are going to keep it from going out this way. It also helps me keep it stable. Okay, so we just went down one step. So that was right to my black line. I'm going to grab my wax. That takes me all the way down. So once you get this done, it's really easy. There's this flashing on the back side. You can see that flashing there. That really is easy to get off. If you just flip it over and just lightly push down on it and those big burrs for the most part, are all gone. There we go. Nice and nice and smooth. Both sides. And repeat. So this one here is a little bit smaller of the handle. Um, you can find the beeswax at um, the hobby shops, like uh, anywhere where you can make candles. You can even use candles. You can use um, anything that's waxy crayons. Um, I got these given to me. I, I think I traded something at a show for two big blocks of these, the one pound 
two pound blocks or whatever they were and I just keep taking chunks off of it I don't even think I've gone through a tenth of a block in six years <laughs> so you don't need a whole lot Ouch. And you don't want to twist it too much. We just want just enough to take off the edges. So I don't know if you can see it in this one. My hole is off center. So that's gonna change things a little bit. You can kind of see how it keeps wanting to pull me over to the right. Oh, I missed a couple. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you'll never run out of wax <laughs> if you got bees. Yeah, no. So here's what it ended up being a little off. I mean, there's hardly anything there because we're making the hole so big. So we'll just clean off the back. There we go. Smooth. And I like to go from the front to the back because the back is where you're getting that flashing. Um, instead of the front, you don't have to clean it as much. I think I went just a little too far on the top hole. Yep, I'm one line above the black. <laughs> so let's marker this again. Clean this up. Okay. 
feels good. I used to try and do this with regular drill bits and a lot of times they'd get bound up on me. So these step bits have been just a world of good. And I do have links to everything in the description. Um, you can get these from almost any hardware store. Um, I think I got this set at uh, ha Harbor Freight. This one got warm. Yes, um, I have it in my block today so that I could show you guys easier because I couldn't get the camera over there. But I put the same block on the um, on the drill press and then I'll lock this in the drill press and it, it makes things easier. Um, but for time and so that you guys could see this was just the better option. Yeah, um, the little uh, scale on the side would definitely make it more accurate. Smooth, how many more we got? We got four more. Sorry guys. Yeah. Um, I think if you did this, if you have a vise, and this is just a scrap piece of wood, these two, three guys could just be nails. And then a set of these, I think at Harbor Freight is like 10 to $12 and just a regular drill. And then a, uh, a jeweler saw, and that's gonna be the end of it. There we go. 
That one just had a tiny little chip on the end of there. So this is a 1 16th inch bit. I didn't change it when I norm but I normally do to a little bit bigger. Two left. My block just broke. This little guy here is pushing out. We'll fix that for now. There we go. Last one. I try and always make extra because I do have them on my website too. So I can have some pre-made. Yoch. The harder you press, the hotter it gets. All right. We don't need this anymore. this back where it goes. We're going to stick this guy here in the block. So this definitely makes some big chips. All right, let's get this over here. So on to our next step. Our next step, we're going to be cutting out these little guys here. Let's see if I can make this work the way I want it to. Okay, 
focused and see if we can't brighten this up a little bit for you guys. I'm grabbing my, uh, this is just my regular whoop, jeweler saw. Um, I am using a size 3 aught blade. 3 slash 0. All right, let's get this on here so the blade goes through here I want the top up so I can see the pattern put a little bit of pressure against it tighten her down and just run it up the string here I like to start in the center normally my the center is where I get Where I get the back of my blade, or the back of my uh, saw blade here. And I just want to go almost from the middle. So I'm just going to start that one. If you push this over to the edge also, I'm locking my blade in place. And wherever I put this, it will start cutting that direction. So, again, I'm going to start right here. And because I can't go over anymore, I'm going to flip my saw on the other side of this. And now we can really saw it. And the line is just a rough line. So we got that one done. Now we're going to do the same thing here. Go down about a little bit, almost halfway, and then we're going to cut it over. semicolon so we'll clean this up a little bit um, and then we'll put a hole in here but this is we'll put that guy over there and on to the next one um, these guys are just plastic test tubes and they're what I hold my saw blades in it helps me keep them organized and it helps me to um, know which blade I'm using did that just break no um, because I always leave this one out the rest are up in the drawers or up in the the bucket so if I forget what which one I'm using I'm able to go right back and this guy has a shorter tail here so I'm just going to start here and go right around right back and we're going to run 
around that side. Just holding it nice and soft. There we go. And repeat. You can kind of see why I do so many at a time. Because everything right now, see how far that one got off? My line is way off. So I'm going to get my blade about the center of the hole. And then I'm just going to start my curve. <sighs> Small paintbrush. And you wipe away your scraps. And I try and make the side of this hole to where there's hardly a bump right there. So what I want to do with this one, because my line's so far over, I'm going to put this right up against the edge, lock in my blade, and then I want to just start straight down. So I've got my line started. Now I can go down and slowly start my turn. And I've tried to make this match up to where I'm going to end right at the end of my other line. So not too bad. We have a little bit more finish work to do on that one, but away we go. So I'm hoping, well, I'll have these done here in a little bit. Um, um, I'll have these out in the mail for my customer tomorrow. Switching over to the other side. And whenever you're pinching or holding down your pieces like this, make sure that you're not getting too close to the blade these things will cut into you so fast. And even if you're like here far enough away, if you tilt that blade, you come right down into your finger and you definitely don't want that. So keep an eye on your fingers.
thanks for hanging out with me. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button and subscribe. Here lately I've been doing a lot more lives. Um, some of my other videos are taking me forever to edit. one and this line is almost gone but we have this this long handle here we're just going to base everything right on that that one started. I'm going to get this one started. Switch over to the other side of the handle. kind of hear the change of the sound and the saw and really tell whether it's cutting or not or just sliding. So I didn't go far enough with the first hole. So I have a little gap here. So I'm gonna try and get in there and bring it straight to the other line. Too bad. Have some cleanup work to do on this side, but that's going to be easy enough. When I'm in full focus mode, I can get these done fairly quickly. But that's just tuned out into the music. Definitely having it up loud enough so I can't hear anything around me. Like a lot of people found out that the last two years it's definitely different working from home. You have to be uh, somewhat self-motivated. For me, it's more about using the days to the best ed that I can. So if I get one or two days in the shop, I try and use it for everything I can. Get as much done as possible. <laughs> I 
All right, four left. Keep getting alerts I'm like what's going on my wife Jamie and I are going to Seattle her first time in Seattle we're gonna go see some of my family so that would be lots of fun Just feel it change. be through. Two more. This spoon's a lot softer.
I needed some good shop therapy lately. Just being able to sit and focus on something. And create. Last one. Sometimes I'll do 20 of these at a time. And you can hear the different spoons and you can hear the different uh, metals in them just by the tone they make whenever they cut. That one cut like it was silver. Double check. Pretty sure it's not silver. All right, let's get the saw put away. And now we're going to go to our Dremel tool. So for this, what I need to do is knock down the edges, front and back, and clean up this little piece right here. There's a little nub right here. Right there. So I'm gonna grab First, a large, it might be a touch too big. These are diamond bits. I just want to take off the edge and I can use this to round out my edges on there too. So turn it back down to five. If you go straight on to the side like this, a lot of times you'll make a dent inside. So if you turn your bit, kind of blends everything together. So now we're just going to go around the edge really lightly. You just want to take off any little burr. Be careful down here in the corners.
So what I'm feeling for is any sharp spot. Yeah, especially this guy right here. You don't want that sharp. We'll just take off the edge off this hole. Nice and smooth. So I don't even know if you have to do this with it going into the tumbler. So I have six of these for the customer that I have to ship out tomorrow. So I don't want to potentially have to redo more of this. So I'm going to save three or I'm going to save two out. Let's see. I'm trying to feel the worst ones. That one's really bad. It's the one I just did. That's the one. So we're going to set these two aside. Um, here, tumbler, tumbler, tumbler. Where'd you go? My tumbler's hiding. So I'm just going to put these up here for now. And we'll move on to the rest of these. Get our backside here. one kind of looks wonky.
checking to see if there's any new comments. This is the tedious part of this process. couple more. No, it's not too bad. Still too sharp. That's better. Now I'm off the playlist because Metallica is playing now. I don't think I have, well, I think I have one playlist with some Metallica, but not this one. Alright, last two. Just got a snow warning. It's winter, it's gonna snow. We still have like three months of winter, I think, up here where I live. Actually, we're in March now. We have had snow here in May. Last one. So this one, our hole was off just a little bit. Uh, right here. So that bumped the line that far out. So you just want to make sure that you're blending, not the line, but just the semicolon wall.
back side of the last one. Then we have a little bit of polishing. And, but before that we have um, one more hole to drill. Nothing really sharp. Okay. So we're gonna put this away. I'll bring you guys up here. I'm going to have to tighten up my, my pieces here. Okay, so these guys can go back together. So these guys are really rough. This guy has a big wedge on there. I'm just going to take that off. Definitely lots of uh, sharp spots. So we're going to punch these guys again and get them ready for the 1 16th size hole. This guy I'm going to put up here in the flower. I don't know if you could see that, but the, the handle was bent up. Um, so like this one here, the handle is bent up right there. So whenever you're hammering these down, you want it to be center. And because this is gonna drop, I'll just give it a lup couple of taps until I see it go flat. It's going to help me make sure that I have a good hole. So I'm making these pendants, but at this point they can be pendants. They can be keychains. Um, really, they could be anything you you want them to be. All right, so I'm going to drill these holes. Actually, no, I'm going to polish them up first. So I'm going to bring you guys here. I haven't done this yet. Tell me if it makes you guys feel feel a little wonky. Everything's kind of upside down. All right, so this is my my uh, soft white wheel and this is a buffer wheel. It's really soft. So, I'm not going to use this wheel because we're going into the tumbler. So I'm just going to get all the tarnish off with this guy here. Put my, my mask on. And I will be right back.
Um, yeah, uh, the Sam's Club card and my uh, or my debit card. So you can guess. You're gonna need it. Okay. Thank you. Where was I? So what I do, let me see if I can get this to work again. What I do is because I have the length, <laughs> because I have the length here, it helps me to stay back so my fingers don't get hot whenever I'm doing these. But yes, I'm gonna punch the holes. I'm gonna, screw the holes in, drill the holes in these, <laughs> and then uh, I'm just going to sand it on my one inch belt sander, and then they will be ready for the tumbler. So I'm going to just kind of bring you over here a little bit, wherever it's going to rest. Again, it's a 1 16th inch cobalt bit. This is the thicker part of the handle, so you will want to just be aware of that. Sometimes it takes a little bit more, takes a little longer. And once it stops cutting, or feels like it stops cutting, just wax it. Normally you'll get right through. I missed this one. When you're doing this also, you want to watch where your drill bit is bending to. Sometimes it wants to slide, so to bend towards you or to the side. And if you put too much pressure on that, 
you're gonna break a bit. So sometimes I'll raise it up just a little bit to make sure that the blade the bit is straight. And that one didn't go where I wanted it to. Last one was off to the side quite a bit. So I think I'm going to re drill that one. So it was, autofocus is off, right? So you can see where the hole drilled through, but it was way off to the side. So we're gonna try this again. So I'll show you what I just did here. So you can see my two holes. There you go, that's better. So because this was already low, I brought it down just enough. So whenever I cut it off, that upper hole is going to be cut off so let's grab our vise or not our vise but our bolt cutters and I'll bring you up here let's see can I get you over here now Still trying to work on what I can do with this camera. So I always keep the side that I want to keep on my side. That lets me know that for sure I'm cutting off at the right spot. And I'm only leaving a little bit above it. Get these cut real quick. And sometimes whenever these pieces are too small right here, what I've done is 
I go in about halfway on the piece. So. Okay, so I'm halfway there. I'll just put a little pressure here and I can twist that off. Two more. So again, pinch it, twist it off. <laughs> okay. Sorry about all that. Okay, just coming over to the belt sander. I'm just going to round these guys off. And that's it. Okay, so what we just did was we ground this down flat, 
we ground not flat but we rounded it over we still have a piece of flashing here that we have to get rid of but by doing that belt sanding first saved us an extra step because I take the um, the sanding disc drum and I smooth out the tops so you can't see the the big saw or the big um, sandpaper gouges so what I'm doing is I'm gonna brown this out and I'm also gonna take off this burr edge down here Wrong way. And I'm running the uh, my fingers over the edges, so I know that there's no hard spots or sharp spots. This guy is dead. That was 180 grit. This one is 120 grit. Just takes care of things a little faster. You just gotta be a little bit more gentler on it. <laughs> Almost threw it in my trash bucket. <laughs> like why is that one so dark that was one that I didn't um, clean up after so we could see if the tumbler will get those sharp spots off No sharp spots. And this does take a couple extra seconds to do. But you end up with a lot cleaner project or a lot cleaner piece. I'm like, why do I feel so much? Okay. Let me just buff this guy out real quick. All right, so we have all of our pieces. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So two of these are have not been cleaned up. So whenever I take these out of the tumbler, there we go. Whenever I take these out of the tumbler, hi. <laughs> 
Uh, whenever I take these out of the tumbler, I'm going to check to make sure they're all smooth and I'll do a short for that. It should only take a couple of seconds. Um, yeah, that's definitely one. Uh, yeah. Another thing that you can tell where you haven't got the edges off is all of the junk that's left on there. A lot of it is for, because it can't get over the lip, which is there, which is what we took off of the other ones. So that's why they look a lot like this instead of like that. It's a lot cleaner, smoother surface for them. So I'm gonna get all these in the tumbler and I'm gonna say bye. Um, thank you guys for coming and hanging out with me. Um, I know the lives are generally go longer than the shorter video clips, but live takes longer <laughs> than 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, but I'll post a short today after these are done and thank you for joining me if you haven't yet please subscribe and um, hit the thumbs up button if you're just watching on your tv uh, really helps out me and the channel and i thank you and appreciate you for spending your time with me